From example two, it can be shown that the lower approximating sums also approach one third, and that is the limit as n approaches infinity of the left endpoints of subscript n is equal to one third. Now, from the figures below here, it appears that as n increases, meaning the rectangles increase, both L subscript n and R subscript n become better and better approximations to the area of S. Therefore, we define the area A to be the limit of the sums of the areas of the approximating rectangles. That is, the area is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of R subscript n, which is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of L subscript n, which is equal to one third. So you can see here, when n is equal to 10, r subscript 10 is equal to 0 0.385. When n is equal to 30, r subscript 30 is equal to 0 0.35. And then when we increase it to 50, we get 0.34. So it's getting closer and closer to one third. So you can see here, this number is getting smaller, closer to that. Now, when you use the left endpoints, when n is equal to 10, we get 0.285. When the rectangles are 30, we get 0.316. When the rectangles are 50, we're getting closer and closer to one third. Okay, now let's apply the idea of examples one and two to the more general region of figure one. What we do is we start by subdividing S into N strips, S1, S2, S3, all the way to S subscript N of equal width as in the figure here. So here we're going from A to B, we have X1, x2, x3, which is x subscript i minus 1, and then x subscript i to x subscript, subscript n minus 1. Now, if we take a look at this, the width of the interval that goes from a to b is b minus a. So the width of each of the n strips, each strips is going to be the delta x, which is equal to b minus a over n. And these strips divide the interval A to B into N sub intervals. So we have an interval going from X subscript zero to X subscript one, and then X subscript two to X, sub, X subscript one to X sub, subscript two, and so on, to where we get X subscript N minus one to X subscript N, where X subscript zero is equal to A, and x subscript n is equal to b. Now, the right endpoints of the subintervals are the following. So x1 up here is going to equal a plus delta x. Okay, so let's go ahead and highlight that. Okay, so x1 is equal to the following. So it's going to take a and multiply it by delta x. Now, what does x subscript 2 equal? Well, that's going to equal a plus 2 times delta x. Okay, and then when we go to x subscript 3, it's going to equal a plus 3 times delta x, and so on. Okay, so let's approximate the ith strip of s subscript i by a rectangle with the width delta x and height f of x subscript i, which is the value of f at the right endpoint. And you can see that in this figure below. So here you can see that the height represents the following. This is the height here, okay, which is the output of x subscript i, okay. And we can see that the width of this rectangle is delta x, okay. Then the area of the ith rectangle is going to equal the height times the width or f of x subscript i times delta x. What we think of intuitively as the area of s is approximated by the sum of the areas of these rectangles, which is r subscript n, which is equal to f of x subscript 1, so that means that if this is the height here, and then we're going to multiply that by our width, which is delta x. And then plus, okay, 
plus we take the height again, which is f of x2, and multiply that by delta x, all the way to when we get to the n. That means that this means that this would be the final one, f of x subscript n. And then we're multiplying that by delta x. Okay, so again, delta x represents the width of the rectangles, and f of the input is going to be the height. Now, the figure below shows this approximation for when n is equal to 2, 4, 8, and 12. When your rectangles, you have two rectangles, four rectangles, eight rectangles, and 12 rectangles. And notice that this approximation appears to become better and better as the number of strips increases and that is as n approaches infinity. Therefore, we define the area of the region S in the following way. So here, n is equal to 2. Okay, we get a better approximation. n is equal to 4. n is equal to 8. n is equal to 12. So by definition, we can say that the area A of the region S that lies under the graph of the continuous function f is the limit of the sum of the areas of approximating rectangles. So a is going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity of r subscript n, which is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the height times the width, plus again the height times the width of each rectangle all the way to n. Now it can be proved that the limit in definition 2 always exists since we are assuming that f is continuous. It can also be shown that we get the same value if we use left endpoints. So for definition three, if we take the area as the limit approaches n of infinity of the left endpoints with subscript n, what's well going to equal the limit as n approaches infinity of f of x subscript zero because now you're using the left endpoints as opposed to the right endpoints or you're starting with the left endpoint and here you're starting with the right endpoint. Now in fact, instead of using left endpoints or right endpoints, we could take the height of the ith rectangle to be the value of f at any number in the ith subinterval from x subscript i minus 1 to x subscript i. We call the numbers x subscript 1 at to the power of asterisk x subscript 2. These are called sample points. Now, if you take a look at the figure below, it's going to show the approximating rectangles when the sample points are not chosen to be endpoints. So a more general expression for the area of S is the following. We take A, which is going to be the limit as N approaches infinity, of the height of X subscript 1 asterisk times delta X. So you can see here, where do these points lie? Well, they're somewhere either in the middle of this particular rectangle. Now we often use sigma notation to write sums with many terms more act compactly. So for instance, we can say that the following. Now let's review what this means with the summation. Okay, the n, this tells us to end with i which is equal to n. n would be the final number. Okay, this summation sign tells us to add all of these. And then the i equals m, this tells us where to start. So the summation of i is equal to 1 to n of f of x subscript i of delta x is equal to the height times the width plus the height times the width plus again the height times the width. Now, so the expressions for area in equations 2, 3, and 4 can be written as follows. We can have the area is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of i is equal to 1 to, the, to n of f of x subscript i delta x or the height times the width. The area for, again, equation 3, limit as n approaches infinity of i equals 1 to n is f of x I subscript, I subscript I minus 1 times delta x. And likewise, A is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of I is equal to 1 to n of F of x subscript I, which is a sample point um, height times the width. Now, we can also rewrite formula 1 in the following way. 
we can say that the summation of i is equal to 1 to the power to n of i squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6, which was what we saw in the previous example.